What's up guys, this is Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. Today's video is going to be the start to a short series of how you should be planning dives. And what we're going to look at today or in this first video is how to determine how long you can stay and what gas mixture you should be using for any specific dive. Now I've chose a random dive here. It's just simply a 30 meter dive or a 100 foot dive based off our geographical location. Uh, but you can use the same technique or same skill set to plan your dives. Now another thing that I did is I used Use multiple dive tables here because we teach through multiple agencies but for the purpose of the video I'm only going to be using one set of tables now you can also do this with a dive computer as well a lot of recreational agencies are only teaching computer usage or computer planning so I threw that in here as well but we're not really going to be focused on that we are going to stick with the dive tables and the dive tables of choice of course we're going to use the SSI tables but I've listed several other agencies here so if you want to stop the video and look at those as well you can kind of follow along with the particular table of your choosing uh, if you've trained through those agencies. Now, if you're like me and you've trained through multiple agencies, one thing that I'll state is, is try to keep your dives pretty conservative. It's okay to use a more liberal table to give you extra bottom time, but even staying in a conservative mode, simply by changing your gas mixture will give you that extra amount of bottom time without pushing the limits at the same time. So the tables of choice that we're gonna use for the purpose of the video are the SSI tables. And like I said, we're gonna be working at a depth of 30 meters or 100 feet. And what we're gonna look at is what gas blend should we be using for that particular dive to maximize the most amount of time that we can spend while underwater. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna be looking at tank choices or cylinder size choices. And we're gonna be basing that off my personal SAC and RMV rate and which cylinder is gonna work best for me. Your numbers may be slightly different. All I'm doing is simply showing you the procedure to plan your particular dive with. And then of course in the final video, I'll show you how I set up my equipment for that specific dive. Because we know that anytime that we plan a dive, we should always plan the dive and dive the plan out. So that's what this video series is all gonna be about. So for part one, we're gonna look at picking the best gas mixture for that particular dive to be able to maximize the most amount of time for me while underwater at that given depth. So using the SSI tables here and going to a depth of 100 feet, I've got several different gas blends up on the tables. I've got, of course, a standard breathing gas of 21%, and it looks like I've got around that 20-minute mark, which is pretty typical for most recreational agencies. That's, that's going to be that average amount of time that they give you. Just as a quick comparison, you'll see another one of the larger agencies says I've got 20 minutes. Another agency says I've got 18 minutes. The Navy tables, which are pretty much the most liberal table at system out there, says I'm around the 25 minute mark. And then, of course, a dive computer of my choosing, which is the Mario Smart, says I got about 17. So that 20 minutes is kind of that average go, go between for most agencies. If I jump up to say a NOAA 1 blend, which is 32% nitrox or enriched air nitrox, I'm really only gaining five minutes of bottom time, which is really not that big a deal, unless maybe you're searching for something, maybe you're doing spear fishing, uh, or what, maybe you just wanna explore a little bit more. So five minutes is not really that much more time. I need a little bit extra time out of there. So if I bump up to say a 36% blend, which is a NOAA 2 blend, uh, of course, I'm gonna have a maximum bottom time of 30 minutes, so I'm really getting where I wanna be at. However, it throws my partial pressure of O2 up to a 1.52 PPO2, and that's that's too much for me. I wanna keep it at 1.4 or lower. Uh, I believe in the 1.4 being the maximum, the 1.6 being the contingency plan. Now, we understand in technical dives, sometimes we plan to the 1.6, but in this particular dive, this is a recreational dive, I wanna stay at the 1.4 and lower. So 36% is not gonna be my best mix here. If I jump up to the 40%, which happens to be the maximum uh, O2 that you can use at a recreational level, it throws my PPO2 well above the 1.6. I'm at a 1.61. Although it does give me 40 minutes of bottom time, that's more of a technical base dive, not a recreational dive. So we're going to stay completely away from that altogether. But I do want to look for the best mix. And if you go back and watch our magic circle, I'll link it up here for you or up here, wherever it comes up. And I'll also put it down in the description below. If you'll click on that, you'll see how we determine what our best mix for nitrox is or for any given depth. Simply click on that link, pause this one, click on that you can see how I come up with my numbers here but the best mix 
say for a 100 foot dive or a 30 meter dive, of course, is going to be a 34% enriched air nitrox blend. And of course, that's going to maximize my time out to that 30 minute mark. And of course, it keeps my PPO2 at a 1.4, no higher, no less. So that's a great mix there. And it actually gives me the same amount of bottom time as what the 36% does, yet it does not send me over the 1.4 partial pressure of O2. So for this particular dive here, going to 100 feet, I'm going to personally choose to use a 34% blend. Now, based off your geographical location, based off what your dive shop may uh, mix as far as nitrox, if they do partial pressure blending or let's say they got a nitrox stick, this should be no problem for them whatsoever to blend up for you. Now, if they bank nitrox, you may not have that option. They may just have 32 or 36 percent. With that being said, of course, you're going to go with the 32 percent. Even though it only gives you five extra minutes, it's going to be a little bit better for you as well than the standard uh, breathing gas of 21 percent. So if they don't partial pressure blend or they don't use a nitrox stick, 32 would be your choice. But if they do partial pressure blend or nitrox stick, uh, 34 is going to be the best mix for this particular dive. Guys, that's going to be it for this video. Just showing you how easy it is to do this. If you got any questions on how I come up with these numbers, obviously the 32 and the 36%, we simply just got off the tables here from SSI. But the 34%, we had to use the air equivalency depth equation. And it was one of our previous videos we just put out. I'll also put it down in the description below. Simply click on that link and it'll show you how easy it is to do that equation. And that's where we come up the numbers here as well. Now there is an Easter egg in this video and I, and I feel pretty confident if you've paid close attention somebody out there will catch up on it and I want to see if you do. I'm not even going to mention it other than there's an Easter egg here and I hope to make a future video on this as well and if somebody calls me out on it I promise you I'll feature you in our video and make a video on how we come up with a particular number but I'll see if you can find it as well. But guys I'll be making two more videos in this series. One will be determined what size cylinder I need based off my sacrifice rate and RNV rate and then the third video will be gear configuration. What gear configuration is going to work best for me based off my cylinder size, based off my gas mixture, and based off the dive that I'm making. So that'll be for video two and video three. But guys, that's going to end it for this video. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. If you find the Easter egg, please put it down in the comment section below as well. And I promise you I will make a video on this particular issue here of this set of tables I've set up here. And let's see if everybody catches it. But guys, if you like this video, if you found it interesting, or if you're thinking that you the future videos are going to be interested, definitely hit the like button for me. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.